who's this? It's your grandmother. <laughs> You're dead. Still here, girl. Yes. Come to the old house tonight. There's quite a few people here who would love to see you. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Graveyard Shift. I'm the Cremator, and, uh, you know, we're uh, we're hanging out in the graveyard tonight. Hi, Dan. Hi. How are you doing tonight? Nice. Introduce yourself and uh, tell everybody what's happening. Yeah, uh, my name is Jurgen Lamb. Uh, I'm a musician from Melbourne and Washington. And uh, currently I am sitting on my sitting in my car, uh, smoking a cigarette, and talking to Dan. Nice the wonderful graveyard shift and thank you for having me here tonight i like what you do nice i like what you guys are doing too yeah <laughs> <laughs> that makes yeah. it all work out <laughs> yeah. yeah i believe the last time we spoke was uh uh with toast at the mirkwood and we did a live uh set and uh interview yeah 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 that was a uh that all started because of well basically uh brandon's birthday uh, yeah. Last year, I went up there and did the uh, the first uh, the first live broadcast from the Mirkwood, and we just yeah. kept going back. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's doing it again this year. He's yeah. gonna have another, uh, birthday show at the Mirkwood. Uh, I can't think of the date right off the top of my head, but I'm sure when you go on the Toast Facebook, it will be there. Yeah. Yeah. He was saying I think it was the 28th of February this year. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna to try to be up there and uh, and do another live show for you guys. So that'll be okay. cool. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, but we're we're here talking about your uh, your your own personal project, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes my own personal, and sometimes uh, the things I do with uh, my good friend Julian Wicker. Nice. How long have you been doing that? Uh, well, we've known each other for maybe five, going on six years now. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe playing music for five or four. Nice. Uh, but we've started doing um, just our duo thing uh, in this kind of droney experimental thing for, I think, maybe two, three years. But uh, it hasn't really picked up until uh, the past year. Nice. And, hope, and uh, hoping to definitely pick it up in this next year as well. Nice. Are you playing? Uh, are you playing in uh, in clubs and stuff like that as well? Because I noticed those two that you uh, the two albums that you sent were uh, were all live, so obviously yeah. you're playing playing out, right? Yeah, uh, we don't have shows often, which uh, I'm trying to change. But yeah, um, we've played at the Mirkwood, I believe, once, and uh, the two live live albums that I've released uh, are both from uh, Ristretto Coffee House and Wine Bar in uh, downtown Mount Vernon. And uh, those have pretty much been our only shows, actually. Other than that, we're usually um, just recording our jam sessions that we would do in the garage right. or in the studio. And um, But we've got some shows lined up uh, this next couple months, actually, I believe. Um, on, on the 16th of January, uh, we're playing at the Woolly Market with uh, our other band, Toast. Nice. And um, with that one, uh, Julian and I are going to have a um, Road Ramblers production out of Cedar Rolly film a live closed session of us, which is when they uh, they close the market down and they film a musician or a or a song or two and uh, release it on YouTube and other social media. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so things are kind of moving a little bit quicker now. Nice. Kind of uh, make... 
make some more appearances. What's your uh, like goal with the uh, with with the uh, current project? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, not only just play more shows, but just kind of um, learn more of the kind of music we want to play. Because right. what we do is uh, more on the lines of uh, improvisation. And what we do is we'll just improvise loops and drones from our electric guitars. And um, sometimes we'll use screwdrivers on the strings to kind of mock a violin bow. Nice. Um, and just kind of make these on-growing um, ambient sounds and loops and just kind of uh, see where the music goes and follow it. Nice. It's usually, uh, it, it, it's pretty free-formed. Very cool. Yeah. Do you see adding adding people to the band later, or is it do you, is it is it best the way it is? Um, if we were to bring anyone else, it'd maybe be a percussionist. Uh, but usually, it's just the two of us, and I kind of wanted to remain that because um, Julian is the only person that I know musically that kind of has the same ideas and visions as I do with this kind of uh, improvisational experimental music. Nice. So I kind of like. Uh, we have a certain connection, and we can kind of read each other's minds. So <laughs> I'd like to pretty much keep it with just the two of us. Right on. With maybe occasional uh, collaborators, but usually it's just our thing. Yeah. Yeah. That would be kind of cool, <laughs> bring in like a guest, whatever, now and then. Yeah, yeah. Lately I've been thinking of wanting to have a celloist or someone that plays a horn or like a flute to... Uh, add in more sounds on nice. top of that. I think that'd be pretty interesting. That would be. Yeah, because um, I recently heard a album that I think was released earlier this year or the year before um, by Lauren Connors, who is a another experimental improv guitarist uh, out of New York. And uh, he did an album with, um, I can't think of his name, but he plays saxophone and he does in kind of a ambient way and he'll run his saxophone through delay pedals and such like things and they did a, a collaborative piece together and i thought that was pretty interesting to have uh horns mixed in with that because i i haven't thought about that and it sounded quite beautiful so i want to try to maybe find someone to utilize their talents with that and try to mix it in with the weird guitar sounds that i do nice that yeah be, that'd be kind of that would definitely be uh different and very cool yeah yeah i kind of like being uh different enough realms of music nice. especially locally <laughs> so uh what motivated you to become a musician well uh growing up i was uh, i have a very musical family my aunt and uncle on my mother's side uh, both music and were in local bands and still are and so I always grew up with music, playing around and hearing earlier things like, you know, Zeppelin and classic rock and whatever else. But uh, so it was always around. Um, I didn't really quite getting quite start getting serious with it or really paying attention to it until uh, maybe 11 and 12 when I started hearing uh, bands like uh, the Beautiful South, uh, Nirvana, uh, The Doors, and uh, other artists like that. Um, then to uh, start making my own music was kind of a mixture of you know everything I heard growing up and seeing my aunt and uncle play music and being like, oh, that looks really cool. I want to see if I could do that. And... Um, I just I discovered kind of acoustic, folky type music, and that really uh, made me want to learn guitar. So I would just uh, run into my sister's room as a kid and steal her uh, acoustic guitar, which I think was a first act or some terrible cheap guitar. But I would just uh, steal it whenever she wasn't home, and I would just mess around with it, and I just fell in love with it. And... Uh, I think uh, artist Angus Stone um, kind of played a really big influence in starting to write my own music and kind of uh, get serious with it. 
Nice. And then I moved on to other kinds of music and where I am now in that more kind of improv, experimental um, side of music kind of birthed well, pretty early on, but I didn't really discover it until the last two or three years. Uh, when I, you know, when I was younger and I would listen to, you know, modern rock songs or whatever was on the radio or running around in YouTube or whatever my brother and sister had, CDs. Um, certain songs, there would just maybe be a few seconds of a piece of that song and I would just play it over and over again just because I I just love that specific part. And after, you know, kind of hearing a repetitive note over and over again, you kind of hear different things in that. And that kind of made me really fall in love with trying to find music that was uh, minimalistic and repetitive. Because I really liked hearing kind of single notes over and over again. And over time, it kind of grows and other harmonics will pop out and it'll sound completely different and kind of hypnotic and that's what kind of led me to go in the direction that I am now so it's very easy for me to write a four chord acoustic song that sounds kind of poppy or indie but to make this kind of repetitive ambient music gives me more of a kind of trance-like feeling when making it or performing it. So I think it's necessary for me to lean more towards that. Right on. Yeah, and uh, the recordings that will be played on here uh, definitely showcase more of the direction I would like to go musically and um, really what the drony like music is all about. And uh, yeah, I just kind of want to get more serious with it the past, um, I mean, the next year and try to really make something out of it because we've been doing this for you know a couple years now and we have a bunch of recordings on our phones or computers of us messing around with these kind of ideas and with only just a handful of shows and so coming with the next year i feel the need to push it a little more and kind of uh uh make this grow right on so what do you think about the uh what do you what do you think about the uh, local music scene? The local music scene? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of ambition out there and there's a lot of uh, different there's a lot of bands coming out, you know, it's uh I'm seeing a lot more bands locally than when I would attend local shows when I was 13 or 14. Right. So it seems like you know an egg is hatching and something is coming. But uh a lot of it I think is honestly kind of the same yeah uh there's some sort of diversity but usually it's kind of it sticks with one or two ideas or directions i guess and so with doing what i'm doing i i feel the need to kind of get out of that and do something that's not very predictable right yeah not do the same thing exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right on uh, even with Toast, you guys just play mostly the North End, right? Yeah, uh, we we tried branching out in different places, but usually our hot spots are um, Everett, you know, locally in town at local bars. Yeah. Um, and uh, Arlington at the Mirkwood. Uh, we have gone to um, Vancouver, Washington. Yeah. We've gone there and played a really good show. Uh, so we've branched out in some further places, but usually we've decided to kind of stick more in town and try to keep more of the local fan base and kind of get that to grow first. Yeah, absolutely. And then the pain of going, you know, all the way to Seattle or further with, you know, <laughs> knowing that no one's going to show up because no one down there knows who you are. Right. So the few people that know you in town keep exposing, exposing yourself to them and more people will grow. A lot of places to play up there. It's kind of a yes or no. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of places are kind of doing, you know, cafe, open mic style things, which is usually acoustic performances. And so, you know, trying to bring a loud rock band or a very repetitive electric group kind of seems a little rough to kind of uh, get some <laughs> spots around here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, usually, you know, here in Skagit, it's it's kind of it's it's pretty difficult to get shows here if you're not in that acoustic um, scene, right. I guess. Yeah, which, which is kind of a shame, but huh. I, I suppose that's the way it is. Right. And I do like um, when I see names that are coming into town. It's usually different every time, other than the you know, like you said, the same bands. But there's definitely something growing around here. I just think they need a little more exposure to uh, the weirder side of music. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Yeah, so tell me how long uh, you've been doing this graveyard shift. Um, Halloween it was uh, 14 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to that. Yeah. It's... Yeah, I really like the show. I like what you do. It's it's practically the only radio I, I'll listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize if I'm not talking a whole lot. What's that? Never, uh, never done one of these before by myself, so. That's cool. <laughs> I just kind of, you know, just kind of go along with it and see what happens. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't really, like, it's like one guy wanted to, wanted a list of questions that I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so yeah. I I just went, you know, I don't think I want to bother with, with this guy. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah. sent I sent him a list of have a whole bunch of crazy shit. And he's like, I don't think I want to do an interview on your show. <laughs> yeah, it almost seems like kind of a act. I kind of like the, you know, you don't really know what to expect, natural approach to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I would usually just like, you know, start talking and, uh, you know, it usually just, it, it just happens. Have you been to any uh, shows lately? Locally In, or not locally? N- actually, uh the last show I went to was the Mirkwood, and it was uh, it was the sometime in August. But yeah, other than that, you know, it's just uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's the life we're supposed to live. I think work, so. Work, nothing and die. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I think That's the. the of what meaning there is. The meaning of life now, right there. It's work and die. Yeah, and what, <laughs> what your body is, and if your body is real in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, on January 3rd, uh, Toast is playing at the Columbia City Theater in Seattle. Nice. Which is a gorgeous venue. Uh, I went there last year to see one of my, two of my favorite artists, uh, Michael Girard and Norman Westberg, uh, perform there. And so it's it's kind of a treat for me to come back there uh, a year later and step up on that stage. Yeah. Right yeah. On. Uh, then on the fourth, the next day, we're at the Merkwood. Um, I'm not sure who else is playing that day. Then we have uh, the 16th of January as well at the Woolly Market in Cedar Woolly, and that's where. Um, me and Julian's uh, improv side project will perform as well nice. and do a private video shoot. Very and then cool. the next month in February, uh, February 29th, at Cat's West Side Bar in Malvernon, uh, me and Julian Wicker will be performing again along with uh, our friend Mikael uh, Bullhart. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right, but he goes under the name Inke. Cool. And uh, he kind of makes ambient music along with some beats. It's kind of like a really mellow, uh, I don't know, trance or EDM. I don't really, I'm not very familiar with that type of music. Right. But uh, I really like the ambient side of his music, so I thought it'd be appropriate to, to have two ambient performers uh, together. And... Uh, I think that's all we have coming up next. Sweet. Yeah. I'm kind of a little bit of a slacker on the schedule with shows. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure there's more. I just can't think of the, think of them off the top of my head or when I'm asked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got a uh, sometime in October. Um, I'm going to be uh, throwing a 15th year show somewhere live oh wonderful and uh i already kind of talked to brandon so he's down for playing there so oh great yeah it looks like 
supposed to be playing at the 15th anniversary show of the Graveyard Shift. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for more details because I don't know exactly when or where for sure. But but it's in the thought process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's birthing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of stuck. <laughs> But uh, I have some ideas. I just don't know how I'm going to get them to, to pull off. There's a, a couple of places. Uh, yeah, I was thinking maybe the Merkwood, they'd be a cool place. Um, Dave has a really cool outdoor venue. Um, it's out in the woods. The stage yeah. is kind of built like a tree house. Oh, wow. Um, it's a, a pretty awesome place. And I thought, you know, that'd be cool. Throw some uh, extra fog machines out there and some tombstones and some people dressed up like ghouls running around scaring people. I thought that would be an <laughs> excellent night. <laughs> yeah. oh, great. So, so uh, uh, best dream. Yeah. It's uh, kind of just kind of depends on the weather and uh, whether or not people want to do it or not. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what uh, Washington weather is going to throw yeah. you. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of in my my uh, my thought processes. What's next? Yeah, other than that, I have no idea. Yeah, that's kind of how I am too. Yeah, I don't really know uh, what lies ahead, but I'm just still carving away at the wall to break into the other side. <laughs> right, that's all you can do. Yeah. It's like a constantly climbing a ladder that has no end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is certainly how I approach music. There's really nothing that I'm super 100% uh, happy with. I'm always feeling like uh, I'm trying to reach for something else. Like right. I'm constantly climbing that ladder to nowhere, trying to see where else it'll take me. But I think <laughs> that's good. I think it's going to definitely continue to go further and find other things and to not stick to the same thing. I think that's uh, really good for music and uh, a natural way to improve and uh, learn. Oh, and I guess I should uh, also throw out that uh, every um, performance that Julian and I do, uh, we sell limited copies of handmade CDs. Oh, nice. uh, they come in special handmade packaging that I make and I'll um, individually draw handmade cover art and uh, write the inserts and title tracks and uh, we, we'll sign them and they'll come in special packages or boxes or bundles with little personal artifacts as well. Nice. And uh, those are only available at live shows. That's kind of cool. that uh, cool. intimate personal touch between the artist and uh, the listener. Yeah. Yeah. I've always liked that idea. You know, by buying copies of CDs or special handmade copies or whatever. Yeah, something where you know, like the they, the the artist had to touch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think that's definitely necessary for music now. Where do you think the industry's heading right now? Oh, I'm not the person to ask that question. <laughs> but I think it's a little preposterous and I'm not really a fan of anything modern, at least on big labels or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the idea of pretty much signing my soul away and having other people that know nothing about music, but only business, taking control of my uh, work. I'd much rather just, you know, be independent. I'm doing just fine booking shows by myself, distributing uh, CDs by myself. Right. I don't think there's any need to bring uh, other business or outside people into that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of uh, very successful artists and groups that are independent and are very successful so it shows that there really isn't a need for a kind of an industry contract or right. label yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. yeah i'd never have a desire for that it was definitely a different day back when i was trying to do it 
<laughs> it's definitely changing and it changes quick and it goes in interesting, questionable uh, directions. That it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest change I saw was going from uh, having to hand a DJ uh, your CD and money to get it played on the radio. Yeah. To to like today. Shit, I would have killed to have an internet radio station that would broadcast my music. Yeah. You know? It's just uh but now it's like that's eh, no big deal. Yeah, there's definitely <laughs> more nowadays. There's a lot more access. Yeah. And, uh, freedom for people who aren't on their contracts or whatever to uh be heard. Yeah. And I think it has its really good qualities. And yeah, you know, I'm I'm very thankful to be able to do this without having to hand try to do a big amount of money and beg <laughs> to <Right>. be heard. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, our old band way back in it must have been ninety two. We're uh, walking around down in Seattle trying to find a gig. But we weren't playing grunge music. Uh, but everybody else was, right? Yeah. So it was, you know, the height of blown out jeans and final shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were just, we were walking around throwing flyers out, you know, trying to get uh, somebody to show up to uh, to a show we were pushing. And uh, a DJ that was fairly well known at the time comes walking out of this bar. And we're like, hey, dude. And he just kind of looks at us and, Hey, you want to check out our tape? And my friend hands him a tape and, and 20 bucks wrapped around it. And uh, the guy looks at us and says, uh, metal, huh? We're like, yeah. And the drummer goes, the drummer said, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he he takes like three or four steps away from us and you see him put the money in his pocket and he threw the tape out into the street. And about that time, another band came walking out of the, another bar, and they saw what happened. And they literally just beat the shit out of the DJ right there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and those guys, the guys who beat up the DJ, uh, they kept playing, but we could not. It's like they put us on a black ball list after that. <laughs> we couldn't get, a, couldn't get a gig anywhere. Oh, Jesus. It was pretty weird. <laughs> but eh, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a story. It was fun. It was fun times, though. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to add before we uh, call it a night? Um, well, just thank you for having me on the show. It's an honor, and uh, I appreciate what you do, and I enjoy the show. And uh, be, sh be sure to check out Toast's Facebook page and uh, Jorgen Lamb and Julian Wicker as well for upcoming performances and news. And uh, it was great talking with you. Right Thank on. You. Thanks, brother. I'll probably be seeing it at the Mirkwood uh, like the end of February sometime. Definitely. <laughs> then. Right on. Well, thanks again for your time. And, uh, and we'll do it again for sure. For sure. Thank right. you. Right on. Good night. Thanks, man. Bye. All right.